Welcome to the ADF Insider Essentials series, which demonstrates the essential skills, tips, tricks, and techniques that you will require for building ADF applications. In this demonstration, you will see how to debug applications using the more advanced features of the JDeveloper debugger. This presentation is part of a series on debugging techniques. In this second part, I'll use real-world examples to show how to use the capabilities of the JDeveloper debugger to more efficiently debug issues. I'll also show how to debug ADF task flows using the integrated task flow debugger. Let's take a look at an example. In this case, I'm getting a null pointer exception at some point when I navigate through the rows of a view object instance. The first step is to determine where the error is occurring. So look in the log window to see the origin of the exception. We're hitting a null pointer exception. So the smart thing to do is to create an exception breakpoint for that exception. In this case, I've created a group of breakpoints and I'm disabling that group of breakpoints until after the prepare session method is called. The prepare session method will only be accessed after the application module is checked out of the pool. This allows me to skip stopping at breakpoints at other parts of the lifecycle. Instead of looking through all the attribute values in the debugger, I can add watch expressions to a breakpoint. And setting watch expressions allows me to limit the amount of attribute values that I see in the debugger and view only the values that I'm interested in in the watches tab. We see that the issue is a null value in the call to get calm, so we can add null value protection and rerun the application to test the fix. Let's see how to do all this in JDeveloper. To debug the application, I'll first test the issue by navigating from a row that requires validation. I see a no pointer exception, so I'll maximize the debug log window to find the root cause. I'll click on the root cause to navigate to that method. And here I see that if get commission percent returns a null, this code would indeed generate an exception. I can verify this using an exception breakpoint. I'll create a new exception breakpoint for java.lang.nullpointer exception and redebug the application. The debugger has stopped, but this is in some unrelated code. To avoid stopping at the unrelated code, I can delay the breakpoint. I'll go to the application module impl class and I'll find the prepare session method. I'll set a breakpoint at that method and that will only fire after the application module is prepared for display. Then in the breakpoints tab, I'll edit the NPE exception breakpoint to include an arbitrarily named group, such as my breakpoints. I'll disable the my breakpoints group by default. And then I'll edit the application module and pull breakpoint. And in the actions tab, enable the my breakpoints group at that breakpoint. Now when I debug again, the debugger will only stop at the NPE after first hitting the prepare session breakpoint. I can enter control plus F5 to add a watch expression for a selected value, such as get commission percent, and then use the watches tab to verify the data value. I'll add code here to avoid the null pointer exception. And of course, I would test to verify the fix. Here's another example of an application to debug. In this case, a set action listener is called when a button is pressed, setting the value of a department number. That department number is passed to a task flow parameter, and the nested task flow uses the department number as a bind variable to filter the employee's query by department. The issue in this case is that a specific department is selected in the start page, but all employees are displayed instead of only employees for the selected department. The first step to debug an issue like this is to set a breakpoint in the bind parameters for collection method of view object input. You'll only be able to set a breakpoint in this method if you have the ADF source code installed, which you can learn more about in the first part of this debugging series. The bind parameters for collection method is a very helpful method for diagnosing wrong data type of issues because it's the last method that's called before a query is executed for the view object instance. 
Next, ensure that the breakpoint is only stopping for the view object we're interested in, employees in this case, rather than having to step over the breakpoint for every view object. Inspect the value of the find variable in the data tab of the debugger. In this case, we see that the value is null just before the query executes for the employee's view object, so that's the issue that needs resolving. To determine what's causing the null value, we can start by setting a breakpoint for the task flow call from the unbounded task flow. Right-click and choose Toggle Breakpoint or select a task flow call activity and hit F5 to enable it. When debugging in the task flow, switch to the ADF Structure tab as well as the ADF Data tab in the Debugging Console. This enables you to inspect values for attributes in various scopes as well as determine which phase of the ADF lifecycle is executing. In this case, we see that the depth null value is correctly set to 10. You can also set breakpoints for method call activities. In this case, we're looking at the bounded task flow that is called from the unbounded one and enabling the breakpoint for the method call that executes the view object query by passing in the depth null parameter. If the value is set correctly when it's passed to the page flow scope for the method call, the next step is to set a breakpoint on the binding in the page deck for that method call. Now we can see that the root of the issue is that the depth no param is null by the time it's passed to the execute with params action binding in the nested task flow. Now that we know the root of the issue, we can drill down into the expression used to populate the value. Double click on the value in the debugging window to see it in an editor. Notice the typo DEPLNO instead of DEPTNO. You can use the EL Evaluator tab to test the typo correction and then modify the action binding to use the correct expression. In this example, we set breakpoints at bind parameters for collection to debug an application. This list includes additional ADF methods that are helpful for determining where to set breakpoints at various points in the ADF framework. For example, if data isn't getting created or updated correctly, you might set a breakpoint at the set attribute internal method of the entity info class in order to determine the value that's being set for a particular attribute. So in summary, your first task when debugging an issue is to simplify and narrow down the problem to its root cause. You can do that most efficiently by using the features of the debugger in JDeveloper. Additionally, the task flow debugger along with the ADF structure window, ADF data tab, and expression language evaluator tab allow you to debug issues as they occur throughout the ADF controller part of the framework. For further information, access JDeveloper's homepage on OTN at oracle.com slash technology slash JDEV.